I'm Evany Nada, Charcuterie Director for Columbus Craft Meats, and I've been sharing my love of salumi with the world for over 15 years. I'm dedicated to making charcuterie fun for everyone. Pairing charcuterie with wine is a favorite experience for many, so a visit to Brooks Winery felt like a necessary stop on our journey. I'm meeting Janie Brooks to learn more about their winemaking practice and to see where the magic happens. Evan, it's thank so nice to welcome you to Brooks. Thank you so much for having welcome me Welcome to the William Valley. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. This is a beautiful, gorgeous view right now. And the vineyards out here, these are, these are all your property. Yeah, so this is our estate vineyard. And one of the oldest vineyards in the Willamette Valley it was planted in 1973. Wow. So we're actually this year celebrating our 25th year making wine and our 50th year of growing vines. That's amazing. And the inside, this is where all the tasting happens. You have all the private events. Yeah, we built this in 2014, really focused on it being a community gathering place. Okay. But we really like to just welcome people, have it be comfortable. But the barrel ball really tells the story of our winery. It was founded by my brother back in 1998, mm -hmm. and he ended up passing away unexpectedly at the age of 38. And I, I got to his house the night that he passed away, and I was sat down by 12 winemakers who all said he was doing amazing things here, and they really wanted to keep the brand going oh, wow. for at least another year. So they offered to take all our fruit and make the wine for free. Wow. Um, and so That's this amazing. barrel wall is barrels from them, so all 12 all of them. That's, that's are special. recognized. Yeah. It's my favorite part of the building because yeah. I feel like they're with me no, that is at all times. They're always here. During harvest, this is where our fruit comes in. This is where all our fermentation happens. Oh, you can already smell it too. It smells like wine. Beautiful aroma. Hey. This is Chris. Hey Chris. Hi. How are you doing? Evan. Evan nice, nice to meet you. Thanks Chris for having me. Chris has been our winemaker for 20 some odd years. Oh wow. You guys want to taste for a couple wines? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. And what type of barrels are this wood wise? What? So these are French oak barrels. Okay. Nice. Cheers, thank you. 22. Yeah, this, this flavor is beautiful. So is this what we would be tasting like as it goes into the bottle as well, or is it? So you'll notice a lot of times early in a wine's life, it'll kind of be separated. You'll find a front, you'll find a middle, you'll find an end. But there's kind of a differentiation between them. Mm -hmm. As they spend more time in barrel and get a chance to relax, they kind of all come together. And so then it's more of a seamless flow on the wine. So uh, okay. these will stay about 18 months in barrel. Okay, so the longer it stays in this barrel, like kind of the smoother and yes. it gets. Yes. Okay. Has a lot, a lot of similarities with salami, really, when you're thinking about like for us, we use natural casings on items like our Finocchio and where it really imparts flavor into the meat just like the oak barrels do to the wine and just the longer it slow ages through it really builds more and more flavor. Mm -hmm. does you have all those that processes same. that happen that are chemical processes and everything else that yeah. happen that really change the character of things and no, so totally. time is your your friend for sure. Yeah seeing everything happening here all this flavor is just I can't I can't wait to start building some charcuterie bites off of uh, some pairings with the Rieslings and Pinots, so let's dive into it. Tasting different varieties of their Pinot Noir and Riesling provided a natural path to pair with our perfect charcuterie bites. Each wine plays differently with our salumi to find a balance of meat, cheese, acid crunch, and a sweet wow factor. All right, Jenny, well, we're out here now uh, with this beautiful view in our background mm -hmm. again, and now we have some boards built. So. Are these kind of your two favorites in terms of a Pinot and a Riesling? They definitely pair the best with food and I picked a couple different styles so that we can see, you know, some that are more high fruit toned versus earthy. I love it. There's actually 15 different types of clones of Pinot Noir grown in the valley and each one of those brings something different to the wine. Each has its signature flavors that it <clears> calls out and what? Flavors, some might be more tannic and more robust and more fruit forward. They might be more earthy. Okay. So. That's great. So we have the um, Janus Pinot Noir, okay. which for us, it's the first wine we started making back in 98. It's not as fruity as California, but it's not as earthy as Burgundy. It's kind of mm -hmm. more in the middle. Okay. Um, but for this, for sure, it leans a little bit more towards those earth notes and mushrooms and forest floor. Ooh, that, is, that is nice. And I love that, especially when you're pairing for charcuterie, when you have those earthy notes, sometimes you want to pick a pairing that's a little bit sweeter or a little bit lighter to just elevate into charcuterie, elevate that wine and just really get all that body together. So we're going to start off with the Italian dry right here. 
and Italian dry is one of our tried and chews as well. So one of our classic flavors and we're gonna go with a lamb chopper. So lamb chopper is a, um, it's a aged cheese made out of sheep's milk and it has a nice subtle sweetness to it. So when you pair the Italian dry and the lamb chopper together really, you get that body of the flavor to really just adds perfectly to elevate your wine. So let's give that a try and then you follow it up with a little bit of acidity in the raspberry, so. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. So you notice when you eat the Italian dry and get that lamb's chopper together, you really kind of build up a little bit of robustness to add to mm -hmm. that earthiness of flavor with the wine. And you want the charcuterie not to take away from the wine that you're enjoying. When vice versa as Exactly. Well. Nothing's supposed to dominate the other. Mm -hmm. Like the key to a perfect pairing. Exactly. I have this, I have this woman she always talks about is it's a magical first kiss. Like, right? It, really it just is. works, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. it, you don't overly taste the wine, you don't overly taste the food, it all just kind of blends together and yeah. elevates both of them at the same time. So the second Pinot Noir that we have is our Rostevon, which is mm -hmm. all from right here mm -hmm. on our estate. So it's a combination of both Old Vine, Pomard, which tends to be super fruit forward. Okay. Um, and then it's blended with two other clones that bring in a little bit more of that tannin, and a little bit more of the acidity. Um, but it's a, it's a bigger wine. So okay. it's gonna stand up a little bit more to a little bit more flavor profile. For something a little bit bolder, it has a little bit more body. I wanted to pair it with the Finocchiona that we make. So our Finocchiona has a whole bunch of body in it. As it slow ages, it really just continues to build and build in the flavor and wild fennel is in there too. So you're getting that full fennel flavor in that Finocchiona to just pair it kind of perfectly with um, the Pinot that we have here. And the cheese that I chose to pair with that is the Parmigiano. Because oh, nice. Because it does have that dryness for the tannin level to really kind of balance each other out. It's not gonna be overwhelming and continually dry in your mouth out, mm -hmm. but it keeps it at that same kind of moisture level inside your mouth as you continue to chew and enjoy. Again, the finocchiona and a little bit of parm. When you have like the meat and cheese, you always need on a charcuterie board to have the acidity and the crunch mm -hmm. and the sweet factors to kind of balance and cleanse the palate and refresh the mouth while you're sipping and enjoying the wine as well. And I think wine has a lot to do with that pairing on a charcuterie board with the meat, cheese, acid, crunch, really just calming mm -hmm. everything out and bringing everything together in one. So what do you think about that pairing? It's delicious. <clears throat> you really get a lot of the the richness. Yep. There's a lot going on. Oh yeah, You can definitely. taste that. Definitely, and it, it really just lives up to the wine that is going. Mm -hmm. Hey, Janie, these are the Rieslings right here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful bottles. Yeah, so Riesling is one of the most versatile grapes that you can make from wine. So you okay. can make it in styles from dry to sweet all the way to dessert. Mm -hmm. There's very few other great varietals you can do that with, but because it's so versatile, it gets very misunderstood. So we're gonna have both a dry that you have now That's in the beautiful. Ara, yeah. and then an off dry. Okay, I love the dryness of that too. Yeah, and you feel on the sides of your tongue? Oh yeah. That tingling, that's acid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and how your palate's clean, right, after yeah. you drink it? Yeah, J just like the olives and the berries mm -hmm. play a role on a charcuterie board with the acidity, I think it does the same thing here, where yeah. it cleanses that palate completely, so it's beautiful. So what we have to start off, we're gonna have a, um, this is gonna be a Calabrese salami, so. And I'm gonna give you this knife so you can cut a little bit of j okay. uh, brie off of that. And the brie really is a great pairing for Riesling because it has that denseness and it has that creaminess involved. Sure. And, and what I do is I'll, I'll put a little bit of jam on there. Having jam that's not too sweet also is important when you're choosing the right jam for the charcuterie board. And have a little bit of a cracker there too. Thanks. Yeah, I think Brie's and creamy cheese along with the salumi adds that sweet salty factor mm -hmm. to the board that's just really great when you're trying to enjoy a Riesling. It really combined well with the berries. Yeah, it really does yeah. kind of bring that, that essence in on its own. And I love the very subtle floral notes Rieslings mm -hmm. have. And to mm -hmm. kind of compliment that, for a Marcona almond, I love adding a little bit of turbinado sugar to that and a little bit of dried lavender. Hmm. But just a subtle bit really just adds to that floral accent. Both know. of these Rieslings are from volcanic soil. So okay. from, you know, right here, which 
We know that from volcanic soil, you get more minerality, you get more of those citrus notes, but you also get a lot more floral notes, and they tend to fall into kind of those white and light purple flowers. For the, this next Riesling that we're gonna be trying, this is a little bit more on the sweeter side, or? So one of the things that's really interesting, I think, about this wine compared to the one we just had. So this vineyard, Boisjoli, is on the other side and it faces west. So it gets a lot of heat in the afternoon, and so we end up getting riper fruit. Okay. And that's why we leave a little bit of residual sugar in it. Okay. Like if we ended up making it completely dry, it would be really high alcohol, which mm -hmm. we don't like either. Yeah. And I love the sweetness on on this Riesling and really choosing something that really calls that out and accentuates it's important. So what we did here is a little little trick that I like oh. using. Oh. So that same turbinado sugar I put on the Marcona almonds, I just sprinkled lightly over the top of our humble Humboldt fog Fog's. cheese. Mm. So what I like doing is bruleeing the top of, with the turbinado nice. sugar. So what the turbinado sugar does is it takes that sweet layer and just masks everything so that all you enjoy is that beautiful creaminess and that well-developed flavor. So I'm gonna cut you a little piece off of that. So I'm gonna just take that, a nice. little bit of sweetness on top right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pair it with a prosciutto. So okay. feel free to grab a ribbon yourself if you'd like on that. And the prosciutto ribbons, it has that beautiful fat cap on it to balance and match that creaminess and robustness of the chef right there. So let that mm -hmm. fattiness really complement mm -hmm. the flavor of the sweet factor that you're getting on the end of your tongue when you're enjoying the Riesling is a good way to co combine flavors there. So a big bite. Just, a, just a little big bite there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a good bite, big bite. Whatever your favorite berry is, whether it's blackberry, blueberry, or raspberry, mm -hmm. adding that little bit of sweetness to it to just continue that elevation of flavor before you take that sip, that perfect build up to mm. letting the Riesling take over at the very end. Might be one of my favorites. Yeah. <clears throat> really good. You know, we eat plenty of cheese and charcuterie at our house, but <clears throat> these are great ideas. Again, it's always, always mm. about enjoyment. Yeah. And enjoyment of the wine, enjoyment of the people that you're celebrating and spending time with. And the charcuterie and wine are just there to just keep the good feelings and the vibes going. So yep. it really and That is. was a big <clears throat> part of my brother's philosophy was just, he wanted his wine on your table every night. Yeah. Right, to be enjoyed by people, which is a lot of why we built the place the way that we have so that people can have community and experiences and yeah. enjoy wonderful food and charcuterie is amazing. Yeah, it's meant for every occasion, no matter yeah. whether it's just a personal intimate occasion or a huge gathering the same type of flow goes together yeah. perfectly. So uh, I appreciate it all the time. Thank you so much for having me out yeah. here in this beautiful setting. And my, my view on Rieslings has completely changed. Good, that's, our, that's our goal. Reason. It's one person yep. at a time. Yep, definitely. Thank mm. you. The magical first kiss that Janie describes is clear when you taste the right combination of flavors in any perfect charcuterie bite. When you taste it, you know, because it just works, and it elevates the flavor of every ingredient. Janie carries forward an incredible legacy of biodynamic farming and winemaking, started by her brother Jimmy Brooks, and their commitment to producing high-quality craft beverages shines through in every glass. 